Mike Zeno Ministries presents Called to Victory. Now here are your hosts, the senior pastors of Glory and Peace Church International, pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. When we pray, we are doing what? Decreeing. You are putting as a command something in the authority that has been invested in you by what Jesus has already done. The prayer of faith is a prayer that has aligned itself with the rhema word of God. Let it be life. Do you need to pray any other prayer? When God said, just say, let it be life? No. Because what he said for you to do is to say, let there be life. And when you say it, you believe it, and you believe that you receive what the intent of that statement has been sent ahead of you to accomplish. You just believe it. And you stay secure to that. You become unwavering. You don't toss yourself left, right, center. You know, all kinds of people, good people, amazing people may even come to tell you that what you heard maybe there's another interpretation forget about the interpretation god who told you will tell you the interpretation of what it is that he told you and if you got it wrong let him be the one that corrects you you follow another man's directive on that situation, I don't care who they are, you will miss the mark. God spoke to a prophet. Go over to that town, to that city. I want you to address this situation and don't go back the same way you came. Don't even stay there to eat. Do what you call there to do and live. And he did exactly that and left. And an old prophet came to him and told him, Hey, you've done your deed. You know, come back and eat. I'm an old prophet in town. Well, if you're the old prophet in town and God had to send me to come solve this problem while you are the old prophet in town, why should I be listening to you? God spoke to me and told me to go. And that same God did not tell me to go back. But the old prophet convinced him. He went back. And after he sat down and ate, the old prophet prophesied and said, you're going to die. <laughs> An animal is going to chow down on you and make supper. You're going to be barbecued for for some animal. And he got it right. He said, Pastor, what are you saying? I'm saying, you have a relationship with God. You have heard from God because you have a foundation that is solid with God. Don't let any man switch you off what God said. Amen? Nobody. Stick with the program. Die there. Stick with the program. God told me this. He's never lied to me. Anybody that brings you a prophetic word must confirm what God has been speaking to you. There must be some connection. If there's no connection between that prophetic word and what God has been ministering to you, shelve it and talk to God and say, God, I'm hearing this. Did you say it? Because I'm not about to do anything that you have not declared already to me by your word. God wants a personal relationship with you. That's why he gives you a mandate to pray. Because prayer first starts with you. If you are afflicted, let him 
what? Pray. Before them, it is Him. Hello? Are you listening? Before them, it's you. Before every other person, it is you. You have to have your own personal lifestyle of prayer. Before pray one for another is let him pray. You don't have a personal relationship with God in your prayer life, but you want everybody else to pray for you. You're in trouble. You've got to have your own personal prayer life. Capish? You understand? <laughs> Pastor, pray for me. Yes, I'll pray for you. Well, have you learned how to pray for yourself? God is not looking for grandsons and granddaughters. He only has sons and daughters. Amen? One on one. He wants a one-on-one -on -one with you. If you don't have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with God, you are susceptible to deception. Now, me having a one-on-one -on -one with God does not mean that I don't listen to other people's counsel. But every counsel must be measured by the Word of God. Because ultimately, your prayer, remember what I said at the very beginning, your prayer is about you making declarations. And your declarations must be, must be founded on the, let me use a word in place that may seem out of place for some. It must be based on the legal rights that God has given to you as a son and a daughter of the Most High God. My sheep hear my voice. The voice of a stranger they do not pay attention to. Those who came before me are all thieves. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So I know what the Word of God says. God promised me abundant life. God's Word promise, promises me increase as I'm attached to him, if anything does not line up with what God said, I must come to God and say, God, this does not line with this, and therefore I declare that this which your word says be true in my life. But things keep on going the wrong way. I keep on saying what God said. But then the foundational thing that I must say is this. God, I don't know why this is happening when this is what your word says. How do I correct this? God may just tell you a witch needs to die. The word of God says, suffer not a witch to what? To live. So now, I don't start praying every witch because you can't kill every fly. Not every witch is disturbing your peace. You say, which one? What is the name? Show me the person. Show me the person that must die. Because some, some things have to die so that you can get ahead. Hello? This is too deep for you? You're too quiet now. Some things need to what? Die so you can get ahead. You say, God, show me who it is that needs to be read off so that the pathway to what your will and your purpose is might be manifested. And God will show you. And when God shows you, don't be so nice and say, hey, I love this person so much. 
I love this person so much. Oh, God, I can't. No, no. Die! That's what you do. Because if you don't, you are dead meat. Someone listening to what I'm... Am I getting too deep and too serious here? You know, some things need to get away from you. The violent, Jesus, I lost it. The violent take at it by what? Force. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't start playing, dancing around this. No, no, die. If they don't repent, dead. If you want, call the person and say, I saw you last night. <laughs> Uh, I didn't see you in the good light. What is going on, sister, brother? What is going on? Because something is about to happen. <laughs> something is about to happen. So, uh, you have anything to tell me? What are you talking about? Oh, oh okay, so... Maybe I'm mistaken because I'm, I'm going to pray some kind of prayer right now. You know, because the Lord is showing me that something is happening and I need to deal with it. You will see how quick sometimes they will say, uh, I don't know what you're talking about, but uh, if I am involved in it, uh, uh, I repent. You know, for real? If you repent... When I finish my prayer, you'll still be alive. But if you don't repent, you are done. And God will clean house. Do you understand? I say God will do what? Clean house. Praise the Lord. Let me say, I'm not even, I'm just at the surface of what I'm talking about. But I, I want, I'm going to take you past the regular time because I think this is important enough for me to do so. Last Friday, I was leading the saints in, in my prayer service and I shared from a particular passage of scripture and I want to go to that passage of one, one of the passages of scripture today because I want us to pray through certain things. Today. Amen? So come with me to the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 20, and verse 14. I'm not even close to what, what we, we need to address, and I'm going to have to continue as the Lord leads me. In Second Chronicles, chapter 20, and verse 14, the word of the Lord talks about Jehoshaphat, and the things that he had to address when he had an enemy. The enemy were the people of Moab and Ammon and the people of Mount Seir. And in verse 14... Jehoshaphat, having talked to God, ministered to God about his situation. God responds. And when he responds, the Bible says, Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah. This segment that I'm going to go with you now with, I'm going to need you to declare with me because I'm positioning us by God's grace to accomplish certain things. You are going to see in real time so many answered prayers Amen? Amen? So many answered prayers that you're going to be shocked 
Because there are things going to happen before you even ask it. Even before you declare it, it's happened already. Amen? Hallelujah. Things prepped in place. So God speaks to Jehaziel. Now what does Jehaziel mean? Jehaziel means one who is beheld by God. Beheld of God. Amen? I want you to lay your hands on your head. And say with me, Lord, behold me. Lord, behold me. Lord, behold me. Lord, behold me. Let God see you. Be held of God. In other words, this is one that I'm watching over. The word of God, the spirit of God came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah. Zechariah means Jehovah remembers me. Amen? Someone said, Jehovah remembers me. Put your hand on your head. Say it. Jehovah remembers me. Say it. Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me. It says, listen to this. It says, then upon Jehaziel the son of Zechariah. Came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation and he said. He declared certain things. I read from the beginning and went to the end of that verse. When God beholds you. When God remembers you. He remembers you for a reason. He says, then upon Jehaziel, the son, or the child of Zechariah, who is the son of Benahiah. Benahiah means Jehovah has built. Somebody say, Lord, build me up. Lord, Build me. I am your church. Build me. You said, Lord, you will build your church. You will build your church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail over that church. I am your church. I am your temple. I am your body. We are your church. Build us, Lord. Remember us, Lord. Behold us, Lord. In Jesus' name. It says that he is the son of Benahiah, who is the son of Jehiel. Jehiel simply means God sweeps away. Amen? God what? Sweeps away. Before God builds, God has to sweep away. I mean, if you know that when we're talking the son of, the son of, the son of, we're going back to the beginning. Amen? You get it? We're going back to what? The beginning. The son of Jael. God sweeps. Stand up. And do this. Lord, sweep it all away. Sweep the garbage away. Sweep every problem away. In the name of Jesus, sweep all the nonsense away so you can build, so you can remember, so you can behold. Lord, sweep everything away that does not belong. Every activity of the devil, sweep away from a life in Jesus' name. Amen. Some things have to be swept away. Praise the Lord. Because God doesn't want to look at junk. He's got to sweep it out. Amen? And he says, he's the son of Jael. The God who sweeps away. And another interpretation of that, that name there is God carries away. Amen? Let God carry every problem standing in your path. 
every problem in your family, every problem with your body, every problem with your finance, every problem at your workplace, every problem in your business, every problem in any area of your life, let it be carried away in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Whoever it is that has come to trouble you must be carried away. Manderebosha. Hallelujah. 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 Say, so carry it away. Carry it away. Carry it away. Carry it away. Sweep it off. In Jesus' mighty name, I decree it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The son of Jael, the son of Mataniah. Mataniah means the gift of Jehovah. Amen? Someone say, I am the gift of Jehovah. I am the gift of Jehovah. I am a blessing. I am blessed and highly favored. I am fulfilled in every area of my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I am a gift and I am a blessing. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of your presence in my life. Amen. 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 This all started well, but something happened between the gift and the sweeping away. Because the devil always comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He tries to bring garbage into your blessing. And that thing must be swept away. Because what must be permanent in your life is that you are a gift. Amen? And then it says, a Levite. Mataniah, a what? A Levite. A Levite means one who is separated or joined to. You joined to God, separated and set apart by God as a priest unto him. And because you're a priest unto him, you are a gift. Hallelujah. I say because you are a priest unto him, you are what? A gift. Because you are joined to him, you are a gift. But the devil wants to come and make a mess. But that is not going to happen. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. A Levite of the sons of Asaph. Asaph means a gatherer, a collector, one who gathers. If you are guarded, then there must be unity. And where unity is, that's where the commanded blessings of God comes. And what the devil wants to always do is to bring about disunity amongst God's people. So we are going to declare today in the name of Jesus. Put your hand on your head. I am joined to God. I am chosen of the Lord to be fruitful, to multiply, to subdue, and to have dominion. I take my rightful place. I have the anointing of a gatherer. I am not a scatterer. I'm a gatherer. I gather. I gather. And when I gather, there is increase. The anointing to gather. The anointing to collect is upon my life. In the name of Jesus, in the glorious name of Jesus, I declare over my life that the grace of God is upon my life to be a collector, to be a gatherer, one who is joined to God, set apart by God, in the name of Jesus, a gift of the Most High God, in the name of Jesus, and the anointing of God 
to sweep away everything that is contrary is upon my life now. Therefore, in Jesus' name, everything that stands in the way of that which God wants to do in my life is swept away. This is a time to build. God, my Father, you are building me up. You are building my family up. You are building my finances up. You are building my church up. You are building every area of my life now. I give you praise, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. You are, O oh God, my Benahiah, the God who has built. You are my Jehovah Zechariah. You are the God, hallelujah, who remembers me. You are God 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 who remembers me. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that your word has come, O oh God, unto me, because you behold me. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, and your word is this unto me this day. The battle is not mine. It is yours. Arise, O oh God, and let every enemy be scattered in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Are you looking for a home church? or maybe you're just passing through the area. We invite you and your family to come join us for one of our weekly services at Gloria Peace Church International. We have two locations in the Winnipeg and Toronto, Mississauga areas to serve you. You can also stream the services live with the Glory and Peace app, available in the App Store. God has something great in store for you, and we would be honored to walk with you on your journey. Be blessed and be highly favored of the Lord. We hope to see you soon. To receive a CD of today's program, send $10 to Mike Zeno Ministries, Post Office Box 3990, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R2W5H9. To order by Visa or MasterCard, call 204-582-6795. Request the program number on your screen. Thank you for watching Call to Victory with your hosts, Pastors Mike and Maria Efezino. This is a viewer-supported program. Thank you for your financial gifts. Call, write, or follow us online. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or watch us on our YouTube channel. This has been a Mike Zeno Ministries presentation.